Um, no one's looked at the passion fruit and said, like, I want to eat that fruit. They've done everything to it to extract the fruitiness from the actual item, which is strange looking and almost unedible. So it was sort of like guys were sitting be like, let's make the most uncollaborative collaboration possible um, and see what happens. And I, I feel that that's how I justify it. These guys knew that this was ridiculous and said, like, will they eat it up? Will people like this nonsense? Welcome to this week's A Blog to Watch Weekly. It's been a busy week for all, uh, but for Dave and Ariel, it's been particularly busy because they have been and they have then subsequently left Geneva Watch Days. So let's get some first impressions because Ariel, I th- was this, this was your first Geneva Watch Days, was it not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So out of 10. Um... Well, I can say the first thing that I felt afterwards was I can't wait to get into air conditioning again, uh, which I eventually did. And it was blissful, I have to say. So, so good. Um, there was a heat wave, I guess. I don't know. I'd never been that warm for me in Geneva. So, you know, that that sort of casual style dress that I've been known for and got um accused of being too casual that was ramped up significantly (laughs) (laughs) so um it actually went from hey i wish i was wearing shorts too or george kern's like why we go into the beach (laughs) um but yes for the uh brand that has many uh diving and surfing watches that's where i wish i was going i saw the fountain of geneva in a whole new way as i wished it was gushing down upon me uh, <laughs> a, bit of, a bit of a breeze to <laughs> waft it in your direction but uh i guess i got to know which of the watches was the most sweat resistant or not because immediately as i put things on my arm that was damp the entire time out of the she- sheer perspiration of the event um there was a major difference between those bracelets that were and were not comfortable on the wrist so so which bracelet turned out to be the most sweat resistant um you know i was actually impressed with Chopek, um, they had this rubber that they said was rubber. It, it, it was it was supposed to match their um, aventurine dials of the Antarctic, right? So they have the metal bracelet, but there's also the strap that comes. And it's rubber, but it looks like blue fabric. And it has these small, I guess you call them inclusions that make it kind of shiny. So it's one of those, I, I, I bet you can't guess what material those straps uh, looked like fabric, actually rubber, sweat resistant. I can't believe it's not fabric. <laughs> which was the watch you had to get off your arm the quickest because it was so warm i don't know remember which one it is but it was probably one of those very sharp metal bracelets that um in addition to pulling your hair is just squeezing your your wrist a bit too much and just wasn't comfortable like that so there's there's always one or two of those because you know your your wrist is expanded it's so humid that your body's a little swollen so like a swollen wrist and a tight metal bracelet no no no, no, David. What did you enjoy the most? You've been to. Have you been to so, all of the Geneva Watch Days? Yes. 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 This is my fifth. Yes. Is it uh, getting it better? Is about... it, was it better this year, or I just got the feeling that it was becoming really, really clogged up. That actually, right. there's almost too much going on now. Yes, that was exactly going to be my my point, that it's grown so much, it is as though it could not handle the growth this first year. So so everyone was a little bit staggered a little bit, you know, for for a moment, like, oh, what do we do now? Like, is it still people just show up at random or do we adhere to the appointments that we had set up or what's going on? So it's quite big. And then they said, you know, there are more brands in the city than there are at Geneva Watch Days, which is kind of crazy because there are like 50 brands at Geneva Watch Days. So I think that was an exaggeration, but like, guess you could safely say that there were at least 80, 90 uh, brands, small and large, uh, present at the same time, same week. Uh, So Geneva Watch Days has really come a long way, and I'm not really sure that they should grow further, because the further they grow, the more organized it will have to be, and the more, you know, it will grow to be as stiff as Watches and Wonders is my worry. So let's hope that does not happen. I mean, presumably there was the usual hangers on or those that just so happened to have a room in a hotel, uh, but weren't officially part of Geneva Watch Days in the same way that it works at Watch and Wonders. Was was it just expanding and expanding? That happened when when you were there and, and, and we were there together, but not this year. This year, anyone who had a room 
um, or they were part. What was funny, though, was that at the Beau Rivage, where most of the brands have their, or a large number of brands have, people were getting kicked out of the lobby and the cafe for showing watches because they were not paying, you know, the hefty sum, like seven, 8,000, however many hard currency for the privilege to be in a, in a room. So, so don't just don't just go to the terrace, the garden terrace, to unroll your watch roll to show your latest uh, invention. I mean, I remember, the was, I remember seeing Sylvan's uh, watch. That would be three years ago. Yes, at the Park Cafe, I think two years ago. And that was basically unrolled from a from a watch roll. So we we would have get kicked out for that had we done it this year at the at the Beau Rivage. You would just not believe how many amazing creations are being revealed from watch rolls at Geneva Watch Days. It's probably yeah, the highest in the world ever, all year round. So, did you see anything? Uh, did you see anything you can't talk about that we want to talk about? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I just want to know whether whether there was the usual, or oh, this is coming in a few years' time from the, the 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 guy who's still working for the guy, but who now wants to work for himself. We've, we've seen a few of those over the years. Is that still happening? Is there still folk looking to stretch out on their own and, and this is where they're kind of floating the ball uh, amongst all the watch journalists and YouTubers and all the rest of it. There's a lot of new brands. I wouldn't say that any of the independents had many embargo watches. I'd say most of the embargo watches were from the exhibitors and a lot of established brands. So 30 to 40% of the stuff that we saw at the least was watches that are going to come out later in the year. And there were a hefty amount of brand new companies, but I don't think there was other um, burner ons around where someone's like, this isn't quite ready yet. Maybe we didn't see all those things as we stuck to a lot of the formal meetings. Um, but it looks like people have been putting together watch projects for the last few years. People are trying to launch and now make some money. Um, I think a good example of that <clears throat> was Breitling had a pretty good showing there. And we had multiple Breitling meetings between you know David being in Zurich, which he can talk about, to a dinner and an event and they introduced their B19 automatic chronograph perpetual calendar movement which is pretty cool but you know we we kind of joked ar around about this they they launched it in the form of three limited edition watches that in total number 420 watches $65,000 a piece um so this is <laughs> this is a very ambitious ask Right. So that's what we're seeing a lot of is less sort of scrappy stuff and more of the big brands having announcements that in a lot of ways are more ambitious asks of the market than would they would have it at Watches and Wonders. Good. So party of the event. Favorite meeting. Party, always Bulgari. You can always count on Bulgari. I mean, it used to be Breitling, but it's no longer that. It's um, They had a little cocktail event of sorts or something. But Bulgari had a proper rock concert because they have launched this collaboration piece with Fender. And so, you know, there was an actual band with, uh, with a proper um, performance and all the rest of it. So it was kind of cool um, and fun and loud. And this was also the send-off party to Anton Pan, who has who's been the technical director for Bulgari for many, 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 many years. And now he's becoming the CEO of Tag Heuer um, in a game of not musical chairs. It's not fair to call this musical chairs. It's, it's musical chairs for Tag Heuer, but not for Anton, because he's been at Bulgaria for so long. So it's going to be cool and interesting to see a technical-minded guy at the helm of Tag Heuer. Let's see how that goes. Mm. Ariel, favorite meeting? Um, I actually had a watch that has been on my mind that we can't talk about, but from Roger Dubuis. Um, the level of detail and nerdery that count that combination is for me a new apex right so like fine finishing incredible effort meets wow when i was 10 years old i would have been so so into that um and that's kind of the well over i think three hundred thousand dollars so we'll talk about that soon but um, not necessarily something that I would be able to wear on a daily basis, but it is actually really stuck in my mind. Cool. Uh, Ripley, what was from a distance, what release either that we've covered already or that we're due to cover, or maybe that we'll decide not to cover for various reasons? What, what, uh, what did you see from a distance that was attractive to you? I mean, that, that long is pretty, but like, 
you know, it's not even price upon request. It's like, we will only give this price to worthy collectors who express interest at a boutique, which is like, they have found a new way to say no to my inquiry. Okay. I guess I, I will give them that. But I mean, it's so limited. It's like, it's almost, there's no point like that. The honey gold one they um, launched at watches and wonders was sold out basically by like the second or third day um, of the show it had already been claimed by retailers. And I imagine this limited edition will be the same thing. That was a really pretty watch that someone went hard on that uh, white gold dial with a little chisel thing and gave it that nice frosted effect. Um, Do you mean Handwerkskunst? Oh, y- 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 it's schnitzel. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Ripley, because Along and Zona had nothing to do with Geneva watch days. So what amuses me is all the brands who well, there decided was Shanghai. to lo- I know. Well, it wasn't Geneva. The thing is this is No, there's maybe- Watches and Wonders Shanghai, which was like, I guess, happening at the exact same dates. Because like the Roger Dubuis, the Roger Dubuis stuff was from Shanghai as well, I believe. No, no, they were there. They had they actually had meetings at the thing. So what I'm saying is there's all this time throughout the year, the brands decided oh, oh, to Oh, I'm thinking of Ulysses launch- Nardon. The Ulysses Nardon was from, uh, or no, Gerard Perigo, I think. One one of these guys was at. Name another brand. Uh, uh, another brand doing something in precious metals I can't afford. Some Something pretty, something open worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it gets to the point that there was all these companies that, that were not in any way at Geneva Watch Days. They were launching news then. I was like, why couldn't you guys wait a week? All the media that's busy with that news. Like, why all pile on? Like, oh, me too, me too. Like, Our freaking handwork schools. We've been working on it for five years, but we can't wait five more days to launch this freaking thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like the it's ridiculous thing. The easiest way to get overlooked, ignored, is to release something at a show you're not at. Yeah, I mean, the, the the fact that there's two shows, like, running right on top of each other seems also absurd. The fact that I can't remember who was at what show because I'm just writing about everything in the week. It's like that's problematic that like is it un is it gp basically the same brand on a financial level like whatever you know they were at one of these things you know it, it's wild that we're at that point where it's like i don't even know who was at what show y'all launched stuff last week anyway it was all in solid gold i guess the point uh for rick is that this has become such a popular show brands are pretending to be there <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool well, that's a- well, that's a very good idea. I mean, maybe just you need chat GPT to launch a, a watch show. Just you just you just do all the AI to pretend you're actually there. So no where's gonna be if you can't be in Beau Ravage's lobby anymore, where's gonna be the new like renegade place where like the guy's projects post up? Will it be the fondue place by the water? It's gonna be a kiosk out by the lake. Oh, five guys. <laughs> Five guys. It's always empty anyway. What's interesting is that (laughs) upstairs and five guys. No, nobody wants to spend forty dollars on a small fries and a burger. Okay, Uh, and and so basically, what happened is Swatch Group showed up with um, uh, with Glossitori now with uh, Breguet and Blumpan officially, and they have underlined it several times that oh, we are paying for this a lot, and I'm like, well, you haven't paid for anything at all for seven years. I mean, I'm happy you could break the piggy bank and finally join. Crayon, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, very good, very good. Blanc, Blanc Pond had a cool outside thing. They had a Airstream. This is re- re- funny. It's like they sort of cobbled I was just about together. to ask. You don't just, don't just bring a horse box and park it outside and they double your No, so they, they, they cobbled together this idea from other brands. Oris had the Airstream and other brands had that. Brightling did sort of the pop-up food thing. And they had this truck that was giving out baguettes. It actually had stamped on them Blanc Pond, which of course means white bread. So for me, this was the most uh, sort of uh, uh, humorous a brand was able to be about itself. So the, the white bread brand is handing out white bread. And not just to watch Seven people, but anyone in, in Geneva. Yeah, Did you have gluten-free? No, it was just baguettes. It was just, that's it. You know it is Blanc Pond. It's our way or there's no other way. <laughs> uh, but that was, you know, that was nice. Yeah, uh, good, good. Uh, do you think that the do you think they found it funny? Do you think like one person in Blanc Pond found this a funny joke, but just had enough authority that everybody else had to go along with it? Was there a swatch version of the baguette? Did you get like a cracker or like? A... <laughs> That's right. There's a there's a like a plastic version. 
there was a little bit of the old, you know, stuffiness from the Swatch group where they're not necessarily able to say everything, but they had their they had their lines, which was as David said, <laughs> we are paying Geneva watch days, even though we're about a block and a half away across the water. Um, so yes, <laughs> we we don't feel guilty walking away from the the non show show, um, and and it did feel like the Swatch Group in a lot of ways is kind of back. So multiple of the brands we met um, <clears throat> professed to having some watches that were under development for a couple of years that they're now releasing, and they kind of hinted. I think Blanc Pond maybe or maybe it was Breguet, but they're like you know to turn a brand around or to do something different or to have a new product. I forgot exactly what they said. It takes several years. So, you know, now that it's been three, four years since all this mess and shows have been coming back again, they have some plan. They have some revitalization stuff. I'm actually, maybe it's not founded actually. I don't know. We'll see, but I'm actually kind of excited. Oh, they were going to come out with something and Ariel has vanished. <laughs> The, the the clearly the long uh, the, the long hook of Swatch Group has reached Ariel and vanished. Oh, it's it back. The Hayek's. Sorry, it's, it's the, the <laughs> of the Hayek. Sorry, yeah, right there. Uh, Hayek oh. Internet. <laughs> hit I hit the back button accidentally, and <laughs> that small little tip of the finger. Um. Anyways, I was saying that this this the Swatch Group brands appear to be sort of uh getting their mojo back, having some interesting plans. Um, so I think the next, you know, one to two years will, I think, have some surprises there. Cool, cool. Well, hitting the back button just like the watch companies have been doing for back the last 20 years. Anyway, right, let's uh, look at a watch. Or actually, let's look at two watches. Uh, there were, if you count this as two watches, then I think there was these two and one other watch that I saw during all the coverage that actually felt to me like the sort of thing Geneva watch days was meant for, whether you like it or not. Uh, this was the H. Moser and C. Studio Underdog Passion Fruit Watch Set. I confess, and in our WhatsApp chat, I think I was maybe a lone voice going, I don't get this. Uh, this this makes the, the only this makes sense to me as two guys who are just friends who decide to do something. And that's absolutely 100% fair enough. You own a watch company, you can do what you like. But in terms of strategy, I don't get it. So you guys both saw these? Were you at the launch event? Uh, We saw them. Um, We went to, you know, we had a meeting with Moser and and the the watches were there and other places. And Moser, you know, for what it's worth, tried to put together some nice materials. They had a floral arrangement that matched the colors. Um, I think there was some kind of interesting photography done between the two guys. Um, I, I'll get to the point. I found these watches both aesthetically unappealing and from a, uh, a collabor- collaboration perspective, mystifying. We've asked a lot of these CEOs, you know, what, is, what, what defines a collaboration to you? And oftentimes the answer is that the sum of the parts has to be more than each individual brand can do they both have to bring something the other side there's none of that here (laughs) at all uh these these watches could have been simultaneously released and not sold as a set uh they're so vastly different price points that like it doesn't make sense it also kind of like i think in a sense makes moser look bad it's like all the looks of a two thousand dollar watch and a sixty five thousand dollar watch or more right because (laughs) yeah that was my first thought as well inherently simple I, I will I will say again that this sort of combination of sort of almost like a sickly purple and sickly yellow uh, seem to be designed to attract certain species of birds and insects more than human beings. Um, so I think they struggle <laughs> to find like actual real world um, colors other than the passion fruit that look this way. Um, no one's looked at the passion fruit and said like I want to eat that fruit. They've done everything to it to extract <laughs> the fruitiness from the actual item, which is strange looking and a- almost unedible. So it was sort of like <laughs> guys were saying, like let's make the most uncollaborative collaboration possible um, and see what happens. And I-, I feel that that's how I justify it. These guys knew that this was ridiculous and said like, will they eat it up? Will people like this nonsense? Yeah, I think the problem is it's a watch design based on a pun. Uh, the idea, like, if a passion fruit, if if a passion fruit hadn't been called a passion fruit, so they couldn't be talking about 
passion when it came to watch design and all the rest of it and the whole launch of this then they couldn't have done it if if passion fruits had been called apples you wouldn't have released this watch colors but it's because they can then ride on the whole it's the passion of watch being oh passion fruit oh look at us I, I just don't get it the moser also i just don't think it's a good looking watch and it's i think a, it's the same normally problem. it is but not in this spec it isn't yeah and the studio underdog is probably the better looking watch of the two uh, and as you say, it costs one sixtieth in theory of the, the price of the set. David, your final thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I was, I was thing? sorry. I like uh, Aria's choice of words, of, of mystified. You know, when I first saw these next to next to each other, I thought to myself, "Wow, I know that one is sixty times more expensive than the other, but they are not supposed to be this similar." I mean, and it's interesting because I've had a grinding years in the making where. I always, you know, just stalled when I try to explain this, but it is true that a lot of stupendously expensive watches look virtually, you know, um, the same or extremely similar to much, much, much cheaper watches. Uh, and that's just a strange trend. And to launch these two next to one another, and again, this is not to ignore the values of, of um, Moser's Perpetual, which is a fantastic watch. It's a fantastic, brilliant watch. Uh, but still, to put it next, it's a ballsy move. It's, it puts big, big trust in the world. In the world of it's kind of like say, an April Fool joke, right? Yeah. Like, look how similar just... it is, <laughs> and yet you pay sixty times over. I think where they where they get around it is they're not in competition with each other because you can only God, if you if it was everyone would just say, oh, that's fun, whatever. I get to say the passion. I'm gonna get the 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 studio underdog, and it'll look the same. You can only get them in a set. So this is literally so the person buys one, throws the Moser in the safe. Where is the better looking of the two watches with that doesn't have one fiftieth of the monetary value? And then they and and then you're also still flexing because you you obviously still have the Moser at home, but you're wearing the other one. So it's like it's like the it's basically the watch equivalent of that sticker where it's like my other car is a Porsche GT3. You know, it, it my it, other ugly watch is more expensive. Right, my other my other ones are perpetual calendar from Moser. Like that's exactly what this is. So I kind of understand why it happened. Now, in really trying these... to justify it there, Ripley, I appreciate <laughs> that. I applaud you, but Matt's but it's a true because it, it's a thing among collectors, especially a certain type that I personally don't really like. Is this if you know, you know, kind of guy? You know, oh, I'm wearing this, but now you know I already have another one. I'm like God, I mean, when when they make you jump all these hoops, as opposed to just wearing a ball or watch, you know they are like, oh, but you have to know that this dial is only but um, it's really bad. But that's do any of us wear clothing right that this there. would ever match? I mean, I'm thinking of like people, you know, who accidentally buy this, <laughs> they're going to be like, what's the one occasion I could wear this thing? Where, like, like what? I just don't know where. But is it like an anti? Is it just like an anti theft device? You know, like it, nobody you, wants to steal that. That's true. You buy, you buy the Moser, but you wear the other one because that's the one you get robbed of. In, Maybe in you London. just collect revolting watches. You open your watch safe, and it's just who's the gang member watch. who's educated enough in the watch space <laughs> to know about this thing? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> you start contact someone. Say, I, you know how they talk about stealing watches to order. How do you suppose this conversation goes? Well, the watch I want you to steal to order is the one that looks a bit like a passion fruit. But the other one's actually at home. So you need to find the guy wearing the passion fruit watch and then follow him. And the other one's in the safe somewhere. Or, you know, oh. sitting in the bed stand. Well, it'll be it'll be know. interesting to see Weird. like which ones of these end up floating up on like eBay or Chrono twenty four where it's just like you end up seeing a bunch of the Mosers oh, yeah. where the guy got it was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got it. I thought it was funny, but then I realized I've got like a sixty thousand dollar perpetual calendar I never wear. So yeah, yeah let me I'm go still ahead. Someone and convinced out. this was a joke and they're not actually gonna yeah. make any of these. Maybe someone one or two really set. wanted the underdog and they're like, Well, I just wanted the underdog and now I have to sell the Moser for like they made one prototype of each, you know, and under Underdog and the Moser people wear them, and they just they just pretend to do a launch. I, I swear that's what it is. We actually saw some cool watches that are coming later in the year from Moser that you know will hopefully make people forget about this. I just hate that this is for the next few months, but we need to think about when it comes to Moser. It kind of looks like someone hit Pac Man with a with an axe in the head. That yellow one on the Moser. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What's with the tiny uh, green accent? They both have it. It's a what, stem, where, right? It's like a stem. The stem? So, so that's really? the that's that's the <laughs> Jeez. On the Moser, Ugh. that's the perpetual calendar hand. So yeah, gross. that's the month indicator. I gross. Know, I was going so to say it's so gross. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like the worm. 
But look, if it backfires, all they have to do is change the dial. I mean, it's not mm. the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. Really. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, the ultimate flex has got to be buying the set and selling the Moser. This so is almost if, like the answer when you ask like chat GPT, what collaboration watch do people not want to buy? Do some research. <laughs> This is what they come up with. Oh, you know what I'm doing now, don't you? <laughs> Chat <laughs> GPT. <laughs> uh, yes, let's see if we can get Chat GP to answer that. While it's right on that have... edge, actually, it, it really is <laughs> a very educated <laughs> answer to that question. Right. Well, let's have a look at this. I, which I believe you also got to try on, and I think this was the other watch that I'm like, yeah, okay, this is what an event like this is for and this is the Constantine Shaken Thin King the world's thinnest mechanical watch okay so how surprising was this as an entry into the world of thinness I wasn't shocked I this mean, is uh... typical Russian hey big expensive corporation we can do better and cheaper <laughs> We have pencils. You have yeah. Space I mean, pen. that's that's what this is. This is just pride. We can do something insane that you never would have seen coming out. We, you know, uh, this is a concept watch. I want everyone to realize that this is not being sold yet. It's not totally done. There's this snap-on part. Basically, what this watch is, they took a human being, they cut them in half, and say the torso and legs are separable, right? Because this watch still needs this module that snaps on the back to do things like set the time. <laughs> um, so. Chaikin was able to engineer half of a watch that lives separate from the body. Yeah, that's actually true. You you need so what if you lose? It it. What if you lose that crucial back snap on part? You can't wind it or set it. Send a letter to Moscow. Um, yeah. Okay. And my other question, since you actually got to handle this one, it looks like there are like literally exposed jewels in, like on the case back of the upper part if you wear it without the back aren't you just going to get debris like legitimately right into the point where those two pieces mount together eh, it's prototype okay i've not just, run just, my finger <laughs> across those so I, I couldn't tell but that's uh, it, i was basically nerved out about it so i, I didn't it, want I to like, touch i think it's the that. back i think it's the back of it so i don't think those are you know moving points i think that there's um you know, it, it's it's relatively safe on the wrist. Look, this is a <laughs> when you have this much thinness, there are many drawbacks. Okay, like this is yes. this is totally like one of those performance cars with like no paint. You know, steering wheel maybe. Uh, <laughs> they they literally just but wanted to make it go fast, and and that's it. Doesn't matter if someone dies in the process. It's what so I much really better looking than the Richard Mille. Yeah, o Ori and I were joking that this is uh, because it has a face and it's so thin. It's basically shaming fat watches. <laughs> <laughs> it's setting it's setting unreasonable standards to watches. Is what I done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do we call it? the the chike and anorexia? <laughs> oh, TV, TV. Unattainable right. standards for you know chunky brightlings and stuff. <laughs> uh, dear. good. I I. Do we expect to see it as a an actual release watch? What's the what was the uh, Yeah, I mean, look, there's there's going to be demand for it. People are going to want to see it completed. He'll make a few of them. Um, look, Constantine is a very smart guy. He loves engineering problems. It's his favorite thing to do. He imagines a particular outcome, and he spends a lot of time imagining a solution for it. Then he engineers it by himself, and he builds it and this is this is why we love the guy, and this is why he does such amazing things because he's a real watchmaker. The whole Joker thing with the faces and the wristbands, that was almost an accident, to be honest. Um, and that's actually usually how these guys achieve their success is something that just happened to be one of the things hits success and they can repeat it. So this is him combining again the two things he liked. The wristbands is technically kind of a face with the you know engineering and problem solving, especially on a budget and in ways that maybe the Swiss never have thought of. And I think that that's really part of the, the, the point here is that the particular solutions that Constantine took to achieving this thinness are things that competition would never do, like splitting a watch in half, for example, and making it so you couldn't even do certain things, uh, sort of an audacity there. And that's sort of like a watchmaker to watchmaker, wink, wink, that only certain nerds can pick up on. 
Um, but this is this is a legitimacy and credibility establishing tool as opposed to you know a money maker. What I would recommend is that you guys go and read my article from 2018. It's titled Konstantin Chaikin Interview and Manufacturer Visit in Moscow, Russia. And I, I went there, I, I, I spent basically two days with him. Uh, and it's basically not really just a manufacturer visit, but also a profile on Konstantin and how his mind works as a watchmaker and as an, as an inventor. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you guys read it because it's an extre- he's extremely rare even in the world of talented watchmakers and engineers. Uh, and um, if you read that article, you will know a little bit more where all these inventions and, and exercises are coming from, basically. Mm. Good stuff. Well, uh, first of all, you guys could be thinking about what one watch you want to speak about next that we've covered from the show that you're particularly excited to speak about. While I reveal the results of the question to chat GPT which is remarkably, uh, remarkably insightful and condemning of what watch brand collaboration does no one want to see. And then we'll read through it because this is hysterical. Lux- they don't want to see luxury watch brands and fast food chains, e.g. Rolex and McDonald's, all the while not remembering that Rolex did a collaboration with Domino's. So there we go. So chat GP note was nothing. They don't want to see high-end watch brands and budget fashion brands, e.g., Patek Philippe and H and M. I think that's just that's just the that's just the collaboration everybody's looking for. I'd be for. so stoked <laughs> if I could get like a white gold oh my Patek God. perpetual calendar at H and M. Although if it comes from H and M, there's a 50-50 chance it'll just destroy the second time you wear it. So there's there is there is always <laughs> that possibility. Right but three and four have been done quite successfully. Exactly. Number the third, three. I, the yes. third one is brilliant. The third one, so ChatGPT believes that the thing that nobody wants to see is serious watch brands doing collaborations with cartoon characters, and it specifically names that a partnership between a brand like Omega and a character like SpongeBob SquarePants might it's not be well Snoopy. received by traditional. I know watch. SpongeBob <laughs> Snoopy is so <laughs> close. Your chappy T. That's I, this is fascinating. It, I'm actually I have we forgot about wrong. AP, like AP and the Marvel stuff. Like, well, hold it, on. Li- <laughs> this is a computer algorithm that, that's seeing this. It, it, yes, it, what it senses is fascinating. So clearly, it it it's able to see something, but be so unbelievably wrong. <laughs> In part of this, it's not even a hallucination, as I call it. It's it's some type of mystery in the market, but it's, fa- it's fascinating. It's good. And then the last one is heritage watch brands and tech companies. So it suggests that we wouldn't like to see a collaboration between Vacheron Constantin and Facebook. <laughs> Can you imagine instead of the instead of oh, the two 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 instead of the wee Maltese cross at the bottom right hand corner, you just had an F logo instead. I think that's definitely so what Jack, to go. chat GPT doesn't know is that actually companies like Facebook and Google have uh, these invitations where they want brands to come in and present. So many watch brands, um, probably Vacheron is one of them, has actually gone to Google and actually had presentations on campus there. So I think that's interesting that maybe, yes, as a collaboration, uh, they wouldn't want the thing on the dial, but there's actually a lot of, uh, of synergy between the people who work there and stuff like that because they're fascinated by like, this is how old world companies work. Well, I think in the week that it, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has been uh, photographed having bought a Patek Philippe uh, straight line annual calendar, I'm not quite sure what the reference number is, that uh, chat GPT is clearly not cottoned on and has been linking Facebook with Vacheron when it should really be. Uh, Patek, so uh, poor show. Such a lame Chat answer. GPT. There's no mention of passion fruit anywhere, and three thousand dollar look alike. Maybe we should here. ask what fruits do people not want to be the subject of a luxury watch? <laughs> Maybe that would be a little well, more specific. We can, there. we can do that. We can do I that. I quite like that. Hi, I'm Ariel Adams from A Blog to Watch. I'd like to tell you about Bezel, the modern app for buying and selling authenticated high end watches. Bezel isn't like other platforms. Bezel was designed exclusively for today's timepiece collectors and enthusiasts, offering choice, convenience, safety, and service. In addition to personally authenticating each timepiece sold on the marketplace, Bezel also offers a personal concierge service to walk you through any part of the watch buying or selecting process. Want something not currently listed on Bezel? Their concierge service is happy to seek one out for you. Buying and selling a watch can be scary as well as challenging, especially with all the options out there today. 
Bezel uses a modern, intuitive interface to deliver a class-leading technology experience that makes it simple and fun to search through available watches or list one you currently want to sell. Try Bezel today and discover what others like you are already excited about. Get the Bezel app or use the getbezel.com website. That's G-E-T-B-E-Z-E-L.com. Thanks. In the meantime, so watch, watch, would you like to speak about next that you saw that we have covered on the site? Is there any? There's lots there from Speak Marine, Armand Straw, Lauren Ferry, Ublo, anything that particularly grabbed your I'll attention? Talk, yeah, I'll say you said, mentioned Speak Marine. Um, a watch that actually surprised me was the skeleton version of the Ripples. So the Ripples was kind of this interesting integrated um, steel uh, bracelet watch that has sort of a case that not everyone understood. And the skeleton at first glance is just a skeleton version of that. It's not at all. It's an entirely different movement, which is actually a five hertz movement as opposed to the th a four hertz movement. And the case is nearly three millimeters thinner. So it's about 6.3 uh, millimeters thick versus like, uh, you know, 9.2 millimeters thick. So you have this really nice skeletonized automatic five hertz movement that's just over three millimeters thick um in a really thin watch case um it's one of the better skeletonized dials in my opinion this again it's felt like a completely different model other than just being the ripple skeleton i don't think they sort of sold it properly but this is this is a sleeper hit price is about just under thirty thousand swiss francs i believe um and yes. i think this was actually quite an interesting watch hmm. David, did you see it in the flash? No, I, I've seen, I, I saw a different version of it uh, a few years back. Um, I wish them well. It's it's a brand that I, for some reason, like, but it's, um, but not, not this watch, not at all, far from it. It's wide, it's thin, and the proportions are really odd. It's, it's not something that I on, like. It, it, I, I'm telling well, you, if you saw the previous one, it's, you didn't see yeah. this watch. It looks like it in the pictures. It's, it doesn't even use the same steel. This is a 904L steel versus the 316L steel on the other one. Oh, that's cool. It's I mean, clearly a lot of work has gone into it. I can, I can tell. That's true. And I, I can th appreciate it. That's what's that. cool about it. Like, it's so easy just to see the pictures like, oh, they did a skeleton now. No, Speak Marin, I think the biggest mistake they made was using this case design. Not that it's bad, but it actually doesn't help showcase what this is all about. They've still got this yeah. Last City thing going on in the back, which I don't think we understood the first time around when they launched it. I still yeah, they did. No, there's no mention of that. When you talk to them, no one uh -huh. says that. It's uh -huh. almost as they, they they wish it wasn't there. Um, no one at the brand knows how to explain that. I didn't ask. They mm. didn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask. Is it don't tell. ACP or what? <laughs> we don't know we don't know no, nobody really understands it it's it's fair to say uh, i just thought we should share before we let kevin through and play some as me as maybe that chat gpt has named four brands that should do a passion fruit themed watch and i wonder how moser feel about being lumped in with these four brands so the first brand suggested by chat gpt is swatch you know playful colorful designs the fair second enough. one is Second one is Ublo. It suggests would be a brand most likely to do a passion fruit themed watch. Then Seiko Prospects. Turns out ChatGPT knows quite a lot about watches, but there we go. And finally, Richard Meal, known for the high end avant garde design. So all there, good guesses. Oh, yeah. I mean, take, all good answers. Richard Meal did a Kiwi watch, and Seiko releases five hundred watches a year, so one of them would likely <laughs> be a passion fruit. No one, one would know. I feel like this is too ugly for Ublo. <laughs> too ugly for <laughs> Oh, that seems like one of those Jean Claude no, Beaver no, ads, right there. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, they actually have really attractive color combinations. I just, I just think it's too ugly for them. That's actually true. Well, we have let Kevin into the room. So, Kevin, how are you today? Oh, that's very kind of you. I'm that's, very, I'm very well. kind can you hear of you. Okay. You let, yes, we can hear you fine. We can hear you very well. So we will Excellent. have a play Excellent. of Hitmas maybe. But before we do that, we'll remind you that if you want to get in touch with the show, you can email podcasts at a blog to watch.com. And gentlemen, don't you know it? You can also use WhatsApp plus four four seven three eight six six ninety eight nine seven. So yeah, I think the six ninety. I think six ninety is the the the, the the proper cadence for this phone number. So I'm yeah. working on the cadence. Working I on can't the wait to hear you sing it, Rick. There's a jingle yeah, coming. Definitely. Same here. This Ripley, is it for you guys. 
I'm gonna balance See you later. Eight, Miss he's, See you. Bye bye. He's, he's, okay. he's finished. He's finished. Bye, he's David. Tiramisu. See you, David. I have to say one thing before we all start. Mm-hmm. I am still alive. Your hitmen have failed. So don't worry. I am ready for it. Send your best. My hitman lost his luggage in Heathrow, so he's still sorting it out. <laughs> Did I miss so, something? Sorry to hear that. That's 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 a side of international, you know, conspiracies that you don't see is just how normal everyday life interferes with the course of 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 you know criminal masterminds. Yeah, had this on tension and then they lost my luggage. <laughs> the flight was cancelled. The the train was delayed because of leaves on the line. That'll be yeah, that happens uh, all the time. So I'm still alive, Ario. You can't get my watch yet. It's the Ripley. Can't get my mad one yet. Yeah, but there we go. Try a good, bit. Good stuff. Right, <laughs> let's uh, play some hit miss. Maybe first up, something a bit away from geneva watch days but a a, a large commented on article from the week this is tudor black bay chrono blue boutique edition m7936 zero b watch it's basically the tudor black bay chrono but in blue first of all before we do the hit miss maybe thoughts on the idea and concept around boutique only editions is this a thing that works at a certain level but perhaps maybe doesn't work at the level of Tudor, Ripley? Um, I mean, it's not like Tudor just has like, price, like sells it online anyway. So you're going to some physical store, some other retailer to get it, you know, if the, even if that is online. So I don't really see it as, as that big of a barrier. And then sometimes you go to a retailer and inside the retailer, there is a quote unquote boutique, which is basically like a glorified, section of the store dedicated to one brand so i don't think i think it's just something they get to tout as like an additional thing they can add like oh you can't get it it's a boutique only thing but i i don't think anyone's being like oh i would look i would have totally buy this i just can't figure out how to get my hands on one because it's a boutique only i want to distinguish the situation from other brands uh, many other brands have their own boutiques and therefore um are sort of making full margin on this um, my understanding is that like Rolex, um, Tudor and boutiques are actually operated by a third party. So there is a retailer who usually owns and operates um, in, of course, relationship with Tudor, these boutiques. So this is sort of Tudor wanting to have something exclusive for those people that invested in stores, but they're still sort of a third party selling it, which I think is, again, different than, um, you know, some of the maybe like Richemont brands, for example, that has boutique only and it's it's really their store. Hmm. Uh, questions before we go to well actually let's play hit miss maybe on it first and then i'll ask my question so on the count of three is it a hit is it a miss or is it a maybe one two three go maybe two maybe two hits uh, my maybe question and it might just be the photography is uh i'll share the screen so those of you that are watching on either a blog to watch weekly live or the main a blog to watch channel can see this is that crown in the out position or is that how that crown mm. always sits it's is it just like the f- no, is it's it not I've, I've i've never noticed that before i, I think the mm. crown is disturbing me it looks like that's got a be chunky what- like stem it's yeah like, it's yeah yeah yeah, no, not liking that. So, so that's, that's why it's a maybe for me. Ripley, why did you vote a maybe? I mean, it's a totally fine watch. This isn't, this is hardly new. This is like Tudor's playbook is like do one in black, then do one in blue, like sometime later. Like th- that just seems to be a thing. We had a black one and a white one. Uh, now we've got a blue one. Um, I mean, it's a totally fine watch. I think it looks good. Um, I think, you know, it's got a Breitling movement in it and you know me, I love Breitling and they make good movements. So it is going to be chunky because of that. I think it looks good on the Jubilee. It is entirely, it is going to be too chunky for those with smaller wrists, but like, it's a totally unobjectionable watch. Um, it's just really doesn't feel special. I would have loved to see them do just something else, but I mean, this is Tudor. It's Rolex's little brother. It's incremental, um, evolutions in, derivative stuff but Tudor is the one that's supposed to have more fun so i would have liked to see something else in the chronograph space maybe a new heritage chrono or something else other than just another black bay chrono now in blue but i mean 
I can't t- say it's an ugly watch. I can't say it's a poorly constructed watch or anything like that. So it's a solid maybe if you like it. It's, you know, it will deliver on what it's supposed to do. Mm. Ariel, you give it a hit. It's a very easy to like watch in a lot of ways. It's kind of universally stylish. Blue goes with a lot of stuff. It's comfortable on a bracelet like that. It is thick. There's that, but it's going to wear pretty comfortably and just sort of serve you well. My strong, strong suspicion is that Tudor is ready to discontinue um, this chronograph, probably for something a little bit more um, elegant, um, maybe thinner, um, coming in the future. I don't know if it's going to be as soon as next year, but I'm pretty sure they're working on something like that. Um, so as we said, as you mentioned, there haven't been that many SKUs of uh, the chronograph, honestly, they've been some, I think the two tone one was my favorite one actually, which I think was really, really cool from a few years ago. Um, but I suspect they're just trying to flesh it out a little bit more before discontinuing, discontinuing it. So, you know, there's, there's literally, if this does nothing for you, there's no problem, but this is a very competent watch that if you had it, you'd probably wear it quite a bit. Mm. Kevin, we got a shooter. Yeah, I mean, I voted it a hit. It's a Tudor. It's a chronograph. It's it's quite nice. The shade of blue is very, very interesting. I do like it. It's not for me personally, but it's, they're going to sell thousands of these. Um, and the fact that it's boutique only, Ariel is right. They're all uh, a combination of, say, watches of Switzerland or Pokhara. And uh, so it's primarily for them. But there's going to be a mad rush. Who's going to get the first? Um, the the retail price is going to go over retail for the first two months. And then you'll see loads of them on Chrono 24 over retail because it's tuned and it's a decent price for a watch with that, that movement in it. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately it will go under list and everybody will forget about it until the, what color are we missing? Red? Red crown line, maybe? Yeah. Well, no, green. Green will be the green. next one. Green will, green will be, next. be the next one. <laughs> we have a review piece coming. Tudor's sending one out one out so we'll get a we'll get some final thoughts on it good stuff good stuff right something a bit more complicated that uh, you had a hands-on with ariel daniel roth tourbillon rose gold watch tell us a little bit about this in fact i see before you do that i realize that david leaving and kevin arriving in has completely negated my go around to find out at the very least what rep brands ripley is repping so before we go any further, Ripley, where are you and what are you wearing? In Los Angeles, uh, I am wearing the Jamberg B2 watch that I wrote up for my column yesterday. Oh, yeah. Got yeah, long yeah. jeans on my head Blue and jeans. Grand Seiko on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you really Love do it. have a wardrobe stuffed full of watch brand clothes. That's quite scary. When was the last time you bought a T-shirt? I don't <laughs> or buy a T-shirt. Or a baseball cap. I, 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 <laughs> oh, definitely don't buy baseball caps. Yeah. <laughs> Ariel, where are you? What are you wearing? I'm temporarily back in Los Angeles, apparently. <laughs> um, I'm wearing one of our uh, a blog to watch store shirts that has the uh, cool. uh, Royal Oak bezel on there. This is the embroidered uh-huh. one. These are, I, I, I thought of this a while ago that this would be a cool shirt, and it turned out it was cool. So um, that's what I'm wearing. Good, good. Uh, Kevin, where are you today, and what are you wearing in the wrist? I'm back in sunny Kent. Yeah, it's sunny. And I'm wearing a Doxa Time and Tide uh, limited oh, edition cool. they did, um, good, good. T600. Very nice. Very, very, nice, very nice. Indeed, very nice indeed. Right, well, let's return. I'm in Scotland wearing a panorite, not raining. That's pretty much all you'd know. Right, uh, back to Daniel Roth. I, Ariel, tell us a little bit about this. You had a hands-on So with the Daniel Roth brand was resurrected relatively recently. It's made by Louis Vuitton's La Fabrique du Temps uh, facility. The people who run that facility were actually working on the Daniel Roth brand um, a long time ago, as well as when it was owned by Bulgari. That is how LVMH originally uh, acquired it. The first watch they they sort of re-came out with was sort of a re-edition. There you see it on the side. There's this yellow gold one. It was a limited edition so there's a slightly different guilloche finishing on the back uh, of it, on the sort of dial part or the face that is. Um, other than that, it's just a pink gold version uh, of the watch. You can see that there's also an open case back, whereas the uh, yellow gold didn't. Uh, this is a non-limited edition watch. Um, it might come out in a further co- color, such as white gold later. 
Um, and then after this, I think that the brand is going to start coming out with additional um, you know, complications and things like that. So it's, it's a very beautiful watch. Um, it's not very big. Um, you know, if you are sort of really into the Daniel Roth aesthetic, uh, huge amounts of detailing, um, this is sort of a passion project. Um, so, you know, you could, you could, you could just tell that the people that really, really liked it, they wanted to take the originals and just make something that was much better. Um, so this is just a continuation of that. You know, I don't anticipate the Daniel Roth brand to have more than one or two releases a year. Uh, they want to keep it very, very small and kind of interesting. Um, so it's it's sort of old school uh, in a good way. It's lovely, petite, um, and again, from a quality perspective, it's just as you can take a look at it. It's 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 really pretty to look at. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Very quickly, uh, hit and miss, or a maybe one, two, three, go. Hit, hit, hits all round. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, I'm loving the. With the tourbillon, obviously, I'm assuming it's a 60 second tourbillon. And what they've done is they've attached three different lengths of pointer to it to sweep around the three different layers of the second track. That might make very little sense as spoken word. So I encourage you to go and look at the pictures. Yeah, hard to describe to that, right? It. I don't know it's what, how I'd it. say it. It's it's uh, it's very cool, and I like that sort of thing. That's the kind of whimsy I like to see in a watch, just a, a, a different approach to actually the way you need to read it in order to tell the time. Uh, Ripley, what was particularly attractive to you? Uh, I like these. Um, I think it's cool that they did a non-limited one. I like that they did a display case back on it um, because, you know, this is kind of the modernized you know, upgraded, more luxurious expression of what, you know, these Daniel Roth pieces were originally supposed to be. Yeah. Let us look at the movement. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, I mean, I, I think it's an interesting case shape, um, one that's distinct, but not so flagrant or ridiculous. It encroaches upon the point of becoming like cloying or just impractical. Um, you know, th there's not a lot to not like about it. Um, rose gold's rarely my, personal flavor of gold but um i think this one does it quite well um and yeah i mean there's not a lot to say that's bad about it other than it's you know quite expensive and i might want to see what the white gold one looks like or something like that but mm. yeah it's a great looking piece cool one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars or euros ariel if you had the chunk of change that's where you put it look you could do worse you could really do worse at that price point they could have charged 50,000 euros more and probably still gotten away with it for the audience they're going for. This is for the type of collector <clears throat> who's really focusing on wanting something specific as opposed to trying to get the best value for it. Yet you'd get, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you could, you could easily spend more. Um, I think they're trying to bank on the fact that the production is really not high, that there's only going to be a few dozen of these per year and that ostensibly if you wanted to sell one you could so i don't think it's really sort of about a value proposition but sort of maintaining exclusivity um and focusing on on, on pure expression and technique mm -hmm. kevin give it a hit as well i think we're just saying yeah. all round niceness there isn't really much more to add i mean i'm not sure about as Ricky says that particular shade of of gold but it's, it is a stunning piece i love it a lot the tonos, I don't know what you would call that, but it's... They call it the double ellipse. Double ellipse. Okay, very nice. Okay, I'm giving oh, it a I mess now. Yeah, I'm not going to unpack that. Stop having that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Stop making stuff up. Double ellipse. He's a, Just he's say a what break. they call it. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's a mess. Uh, it's a mess, definitely. No, uh, it's it's a lot of lot of money. It's a big chunk of change, but, you know, there are worse things you can buy from that sort of cash it is lovely um i'm glad the brand is going from shrimp to shrimp because um it has been sorely missed and yeah well it's an all-round solid solid good watch i wonder how many actual passion fruits you could buy for the price of this watch <laughs> all of them it, rick every well, single one of them <laughs> you buy a passion fruit farm somebody go on to i don't know what the equivalent is in in the states of what we have in the uk it's called right move i don't know if that's the same website in the states it's basically a an estate agency website somebody go on to any state agency website somewhere and see if we can buy a passion fruit farm see how many how many Hope the trees are prettier take. than the fruit 
They, they're a vine, actually. Some of my neighbors have them growing on the fences outside their house. it's a vine. It's a vine, and it makes these amazing flowers. The flowers are way better than the fruit, in my opinion. Gorgeous flowers, and then they turn into this, like, leathery sack full of seeds and slime. But, you know... <laughs> <laughs> That's where Moser went wrong. I mean, passion fruit is a name clearly invented by marketers, okay? <laughs> well, that's my point. You have that's to have passion call- to try to eat this fruit. If they called it something else, we wouldn't have the watch. It was just that they wanted the pun. Of, <laughs> you mean of, slime of, fruit wasn't good? Like, exactly. Like, you know what an ugly fruit is? Have you, is it called an ugly fruit in the States? You never heard of, ugly heard of it in the UK. What is that? Uh, oh, no, hold on a second. Just in case I'm ugly fruit. Just in case I'm completely making this up. I don't think I am. No, no, no. Uh, so an ugly fruit is one of these. Let me try and find a picture I can actually share. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's just called an ugly fruit. It's got uh, to be native to Scotland. Yeah. No way. It, can't, it can't grow. It's the no, thing that is a seed in the sack. <laughs> no, 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 I'll share it. I'll share it. Hold on. Let me just try and find it. The Let thing that's starved of sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, this is an ugly fruit. I... Yeah. Oh, it's a durian go. or is that a jackfruit? It's a jackfruit, yeah, I think, is also yeah, what you call it. That's what it's called. Yeah, the, the Californians oh, no, 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 turned those into yeah, vegan tacos. Mm, Moses right. got one of these lined up for 2025. <laughs> that wasn't a surprise. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So, yeah, if it had been called that, then they wouldn't have made the watch. Uh, anyway, Ripley, the thought of you having passion fruit growing when we can barely grow, like, apples or rhubarb in this country, <laughs> something cold, is, is is frightening. There we go. Right. That's uh, actually what they should have done. They should have made one the fruit and make the other one inspired by the flower. That would have been a way cooler collaboration because the passion fruit, fruit flower, gorgeous flower, really intricate structure, different colorway than the fruit, better colorway than the fruit. And you can actually, there, it comes in multiple different colors. Um Stop trying to ruin their ugly experiment. Come on. They want it to be as bad as possible. You're, by making it better, you're destroying the whole point. I actually like the passion fruit. It's, I love the colorway. It's beautiful. Well, sir, have you have some watches that are sh- surely available for you? <laughs> Sorry, the good news is the good news is there's plenty still available. Uh, who would you have given the who would you have assigned the flower to and who would you have assigned the fruit to between Mozart and Studio Underdog? Well, obviously, the flower is going to yield the better looking piece. So we're going to go ahead and give that on the one that costs like 50x the other and let let the let the passion fruit sit with Studio Underdog, who has a whole other theme of vegetables and pizza themed watches. It makes way more sense for them. OK, so they can stick with the passion fruit, but Moza should have done the flower. Yeah. OK, good. Well, let's uh, solve another problem in the horological world and give this a vote. There might be some opinions. This is the mad, I don't even know, MBNF, Mad Editions, Mad 1S Watch. So this is the new uh, sign up for a, a, a lottery to get a watch that I don't understand. But basically, this is a thinner version of those that have already been produced in multiple carways. Kevin, I think you have one, do you? I do indeed. I do like it. Do you wear a it? Lot. Yeah, absolutely. I wore it yesterday. Do you ever wore use it... it to tell the time? Of course I do. Or it's, do you get your um, mobile phone out? No, never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> I use my smartwatch to uh, tell All the right. time. So, you're double, <laughs> so what you're really saying is you wear this and you wear a smartwatch at the same time? Yeah, I and always have you wear ever, my smartwatch in your... Do you wear your smartwatch in your right hand? Yeah, on my right hand, yeah. So have you ever gone to your left hand to read the time while you've been wearing this watch? The Mad One is a very, very nice watch. I do like it a lot. I'm refusing to answer that question, Rick. But is it a watch? You may have gathered. <laughs> is it a watch in the same way that people? In the same way that some people will say that a smart watch is not a watch, is this also not a watch? It is a watch. It is a watch. One hundred percent, it's a watch. It's it's mechanical. Mm-hmm. You can tell the time with it. Uh, it's got a strap. I very nice do, strap. I, my car the, is mechanical. Movement. So those it are the requirements, a, Kevin? It has a seatbelt, <laughs> which is a Anything with that stuff now applies. And it has a clock <laughs> in it. <laughs> We've finally found the definition. 
Anyway, right, let's, uh, before we talk further on this, let's give it a hit and miss or a maybe. One, two, three, go. Miss hit, no surprise maybe from me. hit. Ripley, why is it a hit? Um, I, I like the old one. I like the original ones. Um, it, they're not, they've stopped doing just more colorways of the exact same thing. I think it's nice that they took the same concept and then said, what's the one area where we can improve it that's going to make a tangibly better wearing experience and the the other one i mean it is very much a statement piece you've got like a literal fidget spinner under the crystal spinning in lieu of a dial in hands um so it's not supposed to be a quiet and understated piece but the original series was quite tall this i think it's like 20 percent thinner or something like that so it's not an insignificant reduction in size by any means either um purple blue good colorways um you know it's not uh, the, the novelty of this design is largely worn off by this point, but I like that they're keeping it alive and not just beating the same drum, but finding a way to improve it from a functional standpoint and, you know, just a general on wrist experience as well. You mean they're not taking the swatch routes and going down, you know, well, they could the, put Snoopy uh, on, on the, on the thing spinning and that, 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 you know, who knows? That will be a hit. Yeah. When, get- when they run out of ideas, we'll know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not linking it to the moon or, or whatever. Whatever is going to be next month, you know, the orange moon or the blue moon or anything like that. I don't know. I, I give it a miss. I think they've already run out of ideas. Making it, making it a different color. Well, okay, it's an idea. Making it thinner. It's not really an idea. It's just a kind of let's make it. I, I'm not, I no, it's, a, it's a gradual improvement. And a, and to be honest, I I. I haven't got in for the raffle for this one because I've got an original red one. I did consider it. But wait a minute. It's not a complicated watch. Who says watches have to be complicated? It barely tells the time. So <laughs> why couldn't they have made it thinner the first time around? Rick, the same thing could be said about a time-only Panerai. It's got two hands and is 17 oh. millimeters thick. <laughs> yeah, but we're compensating for something. What is this compensating for? <laughs> Oh, the fact that you can't get a, you can't afford an MBNF, a full, a full fat version. Yeah, That's what so it's compensating I, for. Yeah, I'm just waiting. Maybe next year it's going to be like the Moser Ugly Fruit at sixty thousand dollars. There'll then be the MBNF Fidget Spinner, based on the same thing at like four, and the Studio Underdog at one, and it'll be a box set of the three of them. Maybe the eventual history of watch collaborations is that all watch brands. Are going to collaborate together like it's just like gravity is slowly sucking all the watch brands i think every bamford collaboration is kind of already like that it's like bamford x tag x this motorcycle company x ublo and all the other lvmh x don perion like they, like they're they're already bamford is one step away they just haven't worked outside of the lvmh group to, to root it in yet yeah it's just just the x x x x x x x watch there go. There, there, that's going to be our brand name. So for our watch design that we've got, that's got you know the tide button on it and the the crank winder, the brand name is just going to be a row of X's because it's the ultimate collaboration. Right, Ariel, what do you think of this? So I saw this watch and it is significantly thinner. Um, it's not remarkable how they achieved that. Uh, they just took out the minutes disc. Um, so this basically becomes a single hand watch very similar in terms of uh reading as like a meister singer um sort of precise but the funny thing is for a lot of people like that's that's enough i you know it's more or less 11 o'clock you know that's that's okay um you know i've got my smartwatch on the other wrist the yeah you know time. they're aware of that it, <laughs> like i said it does create a more elegant experience and they didn't have to do too much except you know cut a cut a section off if i recall correctly um rather than having the base miota i think this has a base swiss made movement though i don't uh, know remember enough about the watch i didn't really talk to them about to remember which uh movement it is um really what's exciting is that the mad 2 is, is on its way um i haven't seen it yet but i know the designer is um, and he's obviously someone that's worked uh, with MBNF a lot before. So this will be, you know, sort of a rare, inexpensive watch from him, though there, it, there, it's not unknown. Um, uh, this has done very well for the brand. I think the interesting thing is that there are now more mad uh, watches out there than there are MBNF, you know, traditional watches out there in terms of the production. So uh, there's 
I think 5,000 or something like that around that, you know, MBNFs. And there's more than that now um, of the, of the mad edition timepieces. Um, so that's, that's sort of the weird thing for the brand is that too many people, now this is becoming MB enough, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, um, an HM and LM, something like that, but for a whole new generation, um, it's sort of like, you know, when they think Omega, they think the moon swatch, right? Um, so it's going to be interesting just to talk to people five years from now and ask them, what do you think about MBNF? And then to answer the other question about, you know, they need new ideas. Now they can just ask Chanel. <laughs> Do you not think this picture of Max makes you think that the text around it should be come to my symposium where you're going to learn about how to get that big promotion you've always wanted? It's a you know, very TED, hey, it's a TED Talk smile. It's right. a TED Talk. It's a TED Talk image. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, right. Uh, and Kevin, how'd you vote? I you, voted a hit. Um, you I show you. Max. <laughs> yeah. Max. I would love one of your full fat watches, definitely. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. What can I say? It's a lovely watch. I love the shade of blue and the purple. Um, it's thinner, which does help. But you know, it's you talk about selling the time. I mean, you've got Van Cleef and Arpels at the other end at two three hundred thousand pounds. It's it's similar to that. No it's one there. has ever made the decision between a Van Cleef and Arpels or a mad one. <laughs> but they don't tell the truth. Not even Chat GPT has made that <laughs> collaboration. You just list all the watches that don't tell the time. It's hard to read. That would be such a long list. Yeah, it's such a long list. But this is a cheaper version of that, effectively. It's, the, Hald- it's... the Haldeman, the one that doesn't tell the time at all. Remember that? It just has the turbine. Yes. No time. Oh, yes. Just turbine. Or the, the, Moser, the, the Moser Vanta Black turbine thing. Well, the uh, Haldeman had no hands, so literally it was a movement with just the turbine. <laughs> the Moser had no hands; it would only chime out the sound. Oh, there's that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was that well, one. They like can't the be beat by impracticality, can they? No, no, no. And they're just going down that same route. That will be our question on Spotify or on the YouTube. So, if you're looking at this, we will ask the question: Which watch that attempts to tell the time? So excluding the the Mosers and that that aren't even attempting to tell the time in our system, which watch that attempts to tell the time tells it the worst. Uh, this is going to be right up there with uh, with uh, the worst time telling watch that's designed to tell the time. Surely, oh, you're, sure, uh, you're not talking about Seiko and the the fact that they lose two minutes every every 24 okay. hours you maybe not the right time <laughs> <laughs> a time a time a somewhere time. on planet Earth. it is that time somewhere it just might not be that time where you are at the time but there we go H- hence stuff. comes in the discussion of precision versus accuracy yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go yeah here that's go. So that's a good one <laughs> that's a whole we show have a, we definitely talk about that definitely uh, that's Kevin. gonna have big audience numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Parents of the world surround where we talk about fewer and less. I, uh, Kevin, I uh, before we leave you and before we finish the show, observations from Geneva Watch Days. What was your favourites that you saw? Oh, Ilang and Zona. That was a beautiful piece. Wasn't at Geneva uh, Watch Days. Yeah, it's so no funny. That was what I said. They weren't even at the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get this watch off uh, because we have a, in a show that was, you know, in theory vaguely dedicated to Geneva Watch Days. We seem to have spent quite a lot of time. It'd be funny if talking. we did a comic bit where we interview a bunch of people about their favorite um, watches of the show and they all name watches that weren't in Geneva. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it was sort of local to me. It was down in Hampton Court. So it's not that far from Geneva. It was in Shanghai, was it not? No, 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 no. no, no. The the GP was in Shanghai. This was did they did they debut this anywhere? Did they just assume all the examples would be claimed and they wouldn't share? It was it was it Goodwood, Uh, Hampton Court, um, the car the car event there. I'm trying. We've got an article on this watch, and I'm struggling now to find it. It's obviously buried within all the the. uh, Geneva Watch Days chat. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, this is. I uh, it has vanished. I cannot find it at all. Uh, <laughs> how peculiar! <laughs> am I am I looking on the wrong website? Has some has have have the high <laughs> as earlier has has some uh, has some high ek from somewhere suddenly uh, got rid of our. Ripley, did we cover that watch yet? 
Yeah, it was published on yeah. the 31st. Yeah. I'm, I'm having to go into the whole brand thing for those that don't know. There we go. 31st of August. I don't know why it's not running. In the, uh, I will share the screen just so we can all appreciate it before we leave the new Alien Zona data graph that you are and, frankly. And never what's the pronunciation of this, about. Ariel? I, I don't want to offend the Germans any more than I have already. The Handwerk Kunst. Kunst. <laughs> Skunst. Uh, Ralph, if you want to log on and just send us a wee WhatsApp, and what's the number, folks, for the WhatsApp group? Plus four four seven three eight six six ninety eight nine seven. Ralph, you know, I was thinking of a different longer, the one that they, the data graph on the bracelet. That's the one that I was thinking about. Oh right, okay. Well, that was my favorite yeah. one that they Ooh. came out with. There you go. There's also the uh, my other favorite was the Chaikin in finish watching the world whole whole shtick. Yeah, just waiting to be another bent battle. Half. Yeah, wait for Bulgari to come out with theirs. Do you think that's it? Are we done? No, one point one point got... six five. It's well, going to go down to 1. at a 6. certain point. They're chasing a record that no one wants. Like everyone would be happy with an extra half millimeter if it meant the watch wouldn't break, or maybe it could have hands or something like that. You know, like or you, maybe you could wind it without attaching like a vehicle thing to the back of it you know like at this point it's kind of like the iphones quit making them thinner make it like survive a drop you know that would be that would be a superior advent in my opinion well so do you think that when you buy the chicken you can buy one of those like protective covers that you buy for your iphone a big plastic thing that goes around it with gorilla glass on it that somewhere in etsy land someone's making a protective oh, yeah. cover for well, your chicken and ultra The face thin. is so minimalist. If you put a cover on, you could give it like a mustache or some like tears rolling down its face. You could get really creative with it. Interchange. See that? Stop giving away these ideas. So interchange. I'm, I'm just writing this down. So interchangeable face. Interchangeable face. So that's part of our watch thing. So don't anybody go copying that or we'll sue you. Right. That's us for this week. Thank you all very much for joining us. We will see you again in a week or so's time. Just one oh, thing oh, before and we go. Kevin, Kevin has a, date, a special date. Special tonight. announcement. I saw, oh, I have a, I saw yeah, he did so. a special podcast, a minute podcast with, with Rob. And oh, stuff. really? Yeah. Oh, have you not seen this? <laughs> 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 tell, us so, about so, your, tell us about your event. Well, basically, it's um, hosting uh, Best of British down in Brighton on the 7th of september we've got 11 british brands this is best of british watches uh bowcroft watches uh christopher ward benjamin james duckworth prestex uh edward christopher fears farrah isotope schofield studio underdog uh opinion and studio underdog will be there with his hats um his hats peter his, no 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 the passion fruit hats yes. it's beginning to sound like one of those you know the place in spain where they throw all the tomatoes and they have like the tomato run. It's beginning to feel a bit like this. You're going to go to a watch event and it's just going to be food being thrown. It's going to be like the pie fight at the end of Bugsy Malone. It's, it's becoming be like us media. They only go for the swag now. <laughs> <laughs> Even the watch brands You want us to buy up. these things? No, no, no. <laughs> We're just going to come, take a picture yeah. for Instagram and give our opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'll be a good event. We've got uh, Scarlet Baker doing a Q and A with the brands. Uh, it's going to be free drink, and it's free, free event. The Scots what, are what, heading what down. You... On exactly. Mass. All exactly. Of what do you want? <laughs> it's going to be a sunny day. Come and join us at um, at the event. Um, you can find details on my Instagram or email Best of British Watches twenty twenty four at gmail dot com. Um, or follow us on Instagram. Yeah, fine. Good stuff. Be good. Well. On that Thanks very much. Final plug. We will see An you. An open next week. bar at a watch event is a fantastic way to stimulate sales. I'm sure. Well, yeah, I'm going to clarify this now. It's the first 100 people. <laughs> One drink. person's get it. He said dr yeah. free drink. Okay. One person <laughs> is going to get a drink, and that's me. <laughs> Everyone's expected to buy Kevin one drink. One drink. Oh, there we that go. There's the, give him a passion with a pass, uh, some sort of passion fruit cocktail. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure love there's it. plenty of passion fruit cocktails. Right, that's it from us this week. We will see you all again in a week or so's time. Goodbye. Bye, Bye all.